You're watching 11 Alive Morning News. 11 minutes of nonstop news starts now. First this morning, the Hawks win against the Bolton Celtics just hours ago could affect your plans. What the win means for two huge concerts coming to the city. And after a dry start to the week, we are tracking rain moving back into the area. We'll time it out what it means for your commutes. A red alert as police investigate a fatal accident 285 westbound near Riverdale Road and another red alert striking up in Roswell. A busy morning kicking off your 11 minutes of nonstop news. A Hawks win causing a scheduling conflict and some potentially traffic messes. Yeah, it's moving the Janet Jackson concert at State Farm Arena to Friday night, the same night Taylor Swift performs at the Benz. 11 Alive's Molly Oak has what you need to know. Well, fans can expect a ton of crowds since the Hawks snagged a win last night. Janet Jackson's Thursday night concert is now moving to Friday night at State Farm Arena, just down the road from Mercedes Benz when Taylor Swift opens her three night stint the exact same night. Now, the good news is Live Nation says anyone with Janet Jackson concert tickets for Thursday, those will be honored on Friday. And if you can't make it, you can get a refund. Marta also stepping up its game. It says it's prepping for more people and will have more officers on the trains and in rail stations. It also has over 20,000 cameras that they say they'll be monitoring. Marta says it's also putting more trains into service to help with the concert crowds and will have what they're calling load and go teams to help load and unload the trains to just help keep people moving. Now, if you are still trying Trying to get tickets. Taylor Swift is sold out for all three nights. In fact, she is the first artist in stadium history to sell out three nights in a row. Janet Jackson does still have some tickets available for her show tonight and now Friday night concerts. Over at Mercedes Benz, parking is sold out in both State Farm and Mercedes Benz, so you do not bother coming there on concert days if you don't have a ticket. However, Taylor Swift fans can come to the Benz tomorrow from 10 to 6, where they will be selling some merch. Back to you all. The father of the UGA football player killed in a crash says he plans to sue the university for $2 million. The crash killed football player Devin Woolock and staff member Chandler Lee Croy. Dave Woolock, Devin's father, is disputing much of the university's explanation of what led up to the crash. A UGA spokesman tells us the school continues to grieve for the Woolock family, but the letter from the attorney, in their opinion, is full of inaccuracies. In a few hours, the trial of the man accused of killing Tory Lane continues. Prosecutors say Austin Ford pulled the trigger. The defense argues that the teenager shot and killed herself. Both Tori's mother and grandmother took the stand saying she was not suicidal. Georgia Power customers will notice changes in their power bills beginning in June. The company says it needs to collect an additional $6.6 .6 billion to cover the higher costs of natural gas and coal. Customers will see a rise in their bills, averaging $15 per month. That was a look at your top headlines. On a rainy Wednesday morning, Melissa. Rain's moving in, and even if it's not raining at your house right now, the rain showers are really just getting going across North Georgia. But I want to say, if you are south of I-20, you have a much drier day ahead, I think, than what I'm expecting up in far north Georgia. The rain right now pushing into northwest Georgia from uh, Alabama. We're starting to see that rain coming down pretty steady out towards Chattooga County, even parts of Floyd County. But in and around Atlanta at the moment, we're kind of in a dry point of the morning. We will see these rain showers closing into the metro between now and about 10 o'clock this morning. By 10 o'clock, I am expecting light rain showers across the Atlanta metro area all around the perimeter, and those might hang around all the way through early this afternoon. But I do think the trend as we get towards late afternoon, that evening commute getting underway, we're going to see a drying trend as that wave of rain and showers clears out of the area. So we'll see some drying periods. I do think we're staying mostly dry for the Braves game at 721st pitch at Truce Park this evening. With the rain showers moving in, cloud cover overnight, we're starting off in the 50s as opposed to the 40s like we had yesterday morning. 53 in Duluth, Covington's 54, it's 57 right now in Atlanta. This afternoon, with the mostly cloudy skies, the rain showers this morning tapering off later on the day. It's going to be a cooler day today than what we had yesterday. 68, my forecast high in Atlanta, 66 in Marietta, Peachtree City 71. Look at the North Georgia mountains upper 50s for your high temperatures today. Going to be a cool day up there. Rain chances staying elevated Thursday and Friday. We'll catch a break Saturday, Sunday. Another round of some showers and storms moves in. Let me talk about tomorrow's round, though. Looks like the morning hours are going to be mostly dry for us, but it's the evening commute 
through early Thursday night when we'll have a round of showers and even thunderstorms coming in. Now, if we stay dry enough, break out into some peaks of sunshine ahead of that, we could see a few of these storms turn strong or severe. I've got a level one threat of severe weather for areas west of Atlanta for tomorrow. That's for mainly gusty winds. But again, if we see a little bit more sunshine ahead of those storms, that could amp up our storm potential. Here's your seven day forecast. 60s today, tomorrow. Looks like mostly late in the day we'll track those showers and thunderstorms. A high of 74, 76 on Friday. For the weekend, we'll start dry. Pretty nice on Saturday, but crash more showers and storms comes in for the second half of the weekend. Grand opening for a new affordable housing building in downtown Atlanta. Project leaders hope it's a solution for those experiencing homelessness. Liza Lucas has a first look at Thrive Sweet Auburn. Liza, there's a hope this model can be replicated around the metro. Yeah, just not only the metro, but really across the country. Now, the idea behind this new affordable housing complex is a one-stop shop for those experiencing homelessness. That means a roof over your head, job support, a medical clinic, a community kitchen, even a coffee shop all in one location. Now around a fifth of the new Thrive Suite Auburn building is dedicated to permanent supportive housing for families exiting homelessness. There are also units reserved for veterans and the vision is to really have these social services on site, knowing that navigating the system can be complex in itself. Having a, a place where individuals can uh, receive housing services, case management, uh, a permanent place to live, as well as workforce development, really just eases the burden of individuals as they navigate the homeless services system. Now I'm told 1,500 families applied. There are only 117 units here, just showing the need right there. It's mostly wait waitlist rather at this point, but there are some spots left for veterans and people earning in the mid to low 40,000s. So we've got all that information for you online ahead of today's launch, and we plan to check back in a few months to see the impact. This morning is the annual state of the county in DeKalb County. It comes as residents are dealing with water bills they say are inflated and unfair. Some bills thousands of dollars every month. Some say they were evicted or forced to sell homes because of it. They took their concerns to the Board of Commissioners. Every month, my bill average every two months over $2,000. I heard from a woman this week whose mother was forced to sell her home because she couldn't pay her $8,000 water bill. DeKalb County leaders acknowledge many meters are outdated, saying they've already replaced more than 100,000. A sad update for a UGA student with a terrifying diagnosis. We've learned the family of Liza Burke says they're stopping her radiation treatment so she can spend her final days in peace. The Georgia senior was on spring break in Mexico with their friends when she fell ill and went into a coma. Doctors initially thought Liza had a brain, a brain bleed, but later discovered she had a brain tumor. This morning, the King Center in Atlanta is paying tribute to legendary actor and singer Harry Belafonte, sharing more about his activism during the civil rights movement. Belafonte Monte was a close friend and confidant of Dr. King and his wife Coretta and helped raise a lot of money for the cause. Harry Belafonte was 96. 67 your time right now tracking some rain moving into the area so those showers are mostly going to be north of Atlanta at 8 o'clock but closing into the metro by mid morning lunchtime tracking rain on top of the metro but it is going to dry out in time for that evening commute later on it's not just today unfortunately the next few days stay pretty unsettled rain chances tomorrow mostly in the evening time during that commute Friday, more scattered showers and thunderstorms are likely. Listen to one of our top stories on 11alive.com right now. A senior in high school from New Orleans set a national record by receiving offers to 125 colleges with $9 million in scholarships. Dennis Barnes applied to 200 schools. What did he pick? Well, he'll let us know next week. The anticipation. That's happy parents, <laughs> relieved parents, and proud parents. Exactly. Wow. That's amazing. $9 million. $9 million. Wow. Just bragging at that point. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Stay weather aware today, everybody, and be safe out there. Have a great one. We'll see you tomorrow morning.